In this tutorial, I'm going to be discussing the concepts of inter and intra rata reliability, as well as doing some examples using a real data set. So to start off with, what is reliability? In statistics, inter rata reliability or inter rata agreement or concordance is the degree of agreement among raters. It gives a score of how much homogeneity or consensus there is in the ratings given by at least two different judges. This is in contrast to intra rate reliability, which is two judges or the same judge giving ratings two different times and then seeing how consistent or the level of agreement that the same judge has giving multiple ratings. So there are three primary statistics that are used for reliability calculations. Firstly, there's Cohen's Kappa, which is, has two raters and is using categorical data. For two or more raters using categorical data, you use Fleece's Kappa, but I'm not going to be going over Fleece's Kappa. It's going to be limited to just two raters, whether it's intra or inter rater. And then lastly, there is the intra-class co correlation coefficient, or the ICC, which is two or more raters using continuous data. And reliability is different to correlations in that they take into account the amount of agreement that could be expected to occur through chance, whilst correlations are merely associations between two different scores and not agreement. So starting off with Cohen's Kappa and some assumptions. There are five assumptions that need to be met in order to use Cohen's Kappa. And the first one is the response, i.e. the judgment that is made by your two raters is measured on a nominal scale, i.e. either ordinal or a nominal variable, and the categories need to be mutually exclusive. Second, the response data are paired with observations of the same phenomenon, meaning that both raters assess the same observations. Third, each response variable must have the same number of categories and the cross tabulation must be symmetric i.e. a 2x2 two two table or a 3x3 three three cross tabulation, but not a 2x3 or a 4x2, and so on. The fourth assumption is that the two raters are independent, i.e. one rater's judgment does not affect the other rater's judgment. <clears throat> and lastly, the two raters are fixed, meaning that they are specifically selected to take part in the study. So moving on to an example data set, I have in the first column the study or participant ID. The second column is um, rater 1 for the EXT test uh, for the left arm and rater 2 for the EXT test on the left arm and then trial 1 and trial 1. And then on the fourth um, column is rater 1 on with the EXT test on the left arm and trial 2. So the first um, well, the second and third column would be inter rater agreement because it's two different judges and the, th the second and the fourth column would be intra rater because it's the same rater and two different trials. All right, so moving on to the actual analysis and how we calculate these different statistics. I've incorporated the data, the example data set that I showed in the presentation into an SPSS data out well, input. And the first three columns are for the kappa, and the next three columns are for the ICC. So let's start off with interrater agreement for categorical variables. So we have the data is coded in 0 and 1. So if, if the judge decided that the participant didn't meet the requirements, they were coded with a 0. And if the judge decided they were, they did meet the requirements for the test, they got a 1. So it's um, a binary coding of 0 and 1, 0 equals no, 1 equals yes. And then the different judges judge the same participant to give the answer. And then for trial, this is for trial 1, and for trial 2 there was a different participant. So now we're going to be judging judge 1 com in trial 1 compared to judge 1 in trial 2, and judge 1 in trial 1, and judge 2 in trial 1. And we can see the level of agreement between these different trials. So for the kappa, we go to analyze, descriptive statistics, and cross tabs. For we enter 
rate of 1 on the rows and rate of 2 on the columns. Go to statistics and we click on kappa. Continue. And then we just click OK. Our output shows that the measure of agreement between Rater 1 and Rater 2 on trial 1 is basically 0 0.8, which in our interpretation, I think that is moderate to good. So now that is basically how it's done. And you can see the cross tabulation, the basic cross tabulation that comes out with cross tabs. And we can see our standardized error, which is used to calculate the confidence intervals and proximate T and proximate significance, which is always important. So we have a moderate level of agreement between our two raters, which is statistically significant. So now let's go on to intra rater reliability. It's the same process, except for trial one, rater one, and rater one for trial two. Again, we just have our kappa. That's all we need for the statistics. And we click OK. So now, the intra rater level of agreement, while still statistically significant, is definitely not as high as the level of intra rater agreement, which is to be expected because the, the participant that they're being, that's being judged may or may not have had different qualities to the, the one in trial one as opposed to trial two. So, and then that's pretty much it for Cohen's Kappa, pretty simple statistic and easily interpretable. So now we can, we can take these Kappa values as well as the standardized error and incorporate them onto our calculator, which was on the spreadsheet here. Uh, let's get to it. So here, yeah, we're looking for the 95% confidence interval limit because that's pretty standard. So we would use a Z critical value of 1.96. But if you wanted to search for the 99% confidence interval limit or the 90% confidence limit, then we would use Z critical values of 2.58 for 99 and 1.645 for 90%. So we simply enter Our standard error, find it. Our standard error, which is, let's do the interrate reliability. So 1.1, 1 .1, 0 0.11, 0 0.11, with our kappa score of, let's just make it 0 0.8, because that's how it's rounded off. So we would have a, a lower confidence interval limit of 0 0.58 and an upper confidence interval of 1.01 .01, and that's statistically significant as well. So to interpret kappa or interpretation of kappa, a value of 0 um, to 0 0.2 level of agreement is none. From 0 0.21 to 0 0.39 it's a minimal level of agreement. From 0 0.4 to 0 0.59 it's a weak agreement. From 0 0.6 to 0 0.79 it's moderate agreement. And from 0.8 to 0.9, it's a strong agreement. And above 0.9, it is an almost perfect agreement. While a kappa of 1 would be a perfect level of agreement. So moving on to the intra-class coefficient, or the ICC. So the main difference between the two is that Cohen's kappa uses categorical data, while the ICC uses continuous data. So the ICC is a descriptive statistic that can be used when quantitative measurements are made on units that are organized into groups, i.e. raters. It describes how strongly units in the same group resemble each other. The ICC is used to assess the consistency, conformity of measurements made by multiple observers measuring the same quantity. So different raters measuring different participants on the same test. So some of the assumptions for the ICC are that there must be normally distributed data, it must be continuous data, and the two groups must be independent of one another. So just like the Cohen's kappa, one rater cannot influence another rater's decision. 
So our example data set, as you can see, we have continuous data as opposed to the nominal data of the cones copper. We have, we don't have the participant numbers on this, on this side, but it's the same, same participants that was used in the, the previous data set. So we have rater one on the BRG test on the left arm, trial one, rater two on the BRG test on the left arm and trial one. So that would be our inter I mean our interator reliability data set. And then on the third column we have rater one on the BRG left trial, I mean a left test, but on trial two. So the first and the third column would be our interator data set. It's also important to note that um, the intraclass correlation coefficient or the ICC has different models and forms which are specif specific to different types of data and what you're trying to find. So there's three different types of models. Model one is where each subject is assessed by a different set of randomly selected raters. And this is a quite rare in reliability studies. Model two is when each subject is assessed by each rater and the raters have been randomly selected. And model three is when each subject is assessed by each rater, but the raters are the only raters of interest. So there are no other raters to randomly pick from. So here we get the different types of models or the different forms. So I, when there's one in the beginning, it is related to model one. And when there's two, it is related to model two and three it is part of the model three. So 1.1 is when each subject is assessed by a different set of randomly selected raters and the reliability is calculated from a single measurement and this is uncommonly used in clinical reliability studies. So 1.k, um, the k represents the average of k raters measurements. So it doesn't take the individual measurement, it takes an overall average and compares that average to the different judges average. So wherever there's a K, they're using the average of the scores and not the individual scores. But for the data set that we'll be using, it's the model that we'll be using is ICC 3.1, where each subject is assessed by each rater, but the raters are the only rates of interest and reliability is calculated from a single measurement, as opposed to a pool of raters, which is model two, and model one, which is a different set of randomly selected raters. So our, our raters are the only ones that we want to investigate, and we want to use individual scores against individual scores. So it's paired as opposed to just an overall average. And if you want to find out more about the different models and forms of ICC, let's check out this link at the bottom here. And it's a nice little explanation of the different models and forms. So just moving on to the interpretation of ICC. Fleece and PNW in 2009 give two different interpretations, but they're kind of, they seem to be kind of similar. So from 0 0.75 upwards, Fleece says it's an excellent level of agreement or conformity while from 0 0.75 to 0. Point, no, no, what's that 8 8 7 or something like that um pnw says that's a good level of um conformity but 0 0.87 to 0 0.99 or 1 are good enough to be considered as clinical measures from 0 0.5 or below 0.75 fleece considers up to 0.50 to be a good level of conformity or agreement while PNW suggests that from 0.75 down it's moderate until 2.5 it starts to become a poor level of agreement and <clears throat> a common statistic to report alongside the ICC as almost as, as a type of effect size is the standard error of measurement. And this is not to be confused with the standard error of the mean, which sounds similar, but it is something entirely different. The SEM, or the standard error of measurement, 
expresses the variability in the same units as the original measure. It is essentially a form of the standard deviation, so that we know that 68% of repeated measures are likely to fall within plus or minus one standard error of measurement of the true value. So the formula is pretty simple. It is the standard deviation times the square root of one minus ICC. And again, I put a little calculator here. So I'll attach this to the, the video and I'll put it in the comment section or a little description. So you guys can use that. You just enter the SD, standard deviation and the ICC, and then the output gives you the SEM, which can report alongside the ICC. And thanks for watching this video. I hope it was useful. Okay, so moving on to the intra-class correlation coefficient calculation example. We have our three sets of data here. Rater 1 for BRG trial 1, Rater 2 for BRG trial 1, and Rater 1 for BRG trial 2. So the first two, or well, yeah, in this, in this three, the first two are interrelated reliability, because it's two different raters, and the first and the third are, are intra-rater reliability, because it's the same rater rating someone twice. Okay, so to start off with the calculation, we go all the way down to scale, and then click reliability analysis. We enter the specific data that we want, so we're going to start off with the inter -rate Interator reliability and then after you entered it so you go to statistics and then for descriptives if you want to calculate the SEM you do need the scale descriptive stats and then for the ICC we just click on this little square here the intra-class correlation coefficient and I explained the models earlier but SPSS doesn't really stick to the different the language that is used for ICC normally and it just kind of changes it up a bit but model 1 is a one-way random model 2 is a two-way random and model 3 is a two-way mixed and there's two different types consistency which is default and absolute agreement and absolute agreement is just when you want to work out whether the error involved in the measurement is systematic or not i.e. are the measurements offset between the trials or between raters and if that is considered important you click absolute agreement and if it's not very important you can just click consistency which is what I'm going to be using oops not that for this example so after you chosen or selected these options you click continue uh, and it calculates the confidence intervals which is great because the actual formula for these confidence intervals is really like half a page long it's ridiculous. So thank you, SPSS. So we click continue and then we click OK. So this is our, our output for the ICC. We get a type of the case processing summary, which is default. We get the reliability statistics, which is Chromebox Alpha, but we're not going to be using Chromebox Alpha because it's just the average of the measures as opposed to the single scores. And we're going to be sticking with the single scores measures here. You can see that the convex alpha is the same as the average measure here. The scale statistics gives us the mean, variance, standard deviation, and the number of items included. Number of items means the different types of raters, or number of raters that you're using, at least in this example. So we have two different raters. So we're going to be using the single measures because we're not using the the K option where you can get the average of the scores compared to each other, but rather each individual score compared to the paired opposite. We get the confidence interval limit, which is important to add, as well as the F value, degrees of freedom, and the overall significance value. So we have an ICC of 0 0.655 or 0 0.66. And according to our interpretation, Fleece considers it to be good, while the other author considers, considers it to be either moderate or poor. So depending on which author you use as an, for your interpretation, that's what interpretation you will use. So let's move on to intra rater reliability. Same process, reliability analysis, get rid of rater 2 and put in rater 1 for trial 2. 
the statistics stay the same. Everything's good for that. And we click OK. And again, the intra-rater reliability is lower than the inter-rater reliability for the same reasons I mentioned for the kappa. But overall, it is still significant. But the level of agreement is between now poor and moderate, leaning towards the poor side, and definitely, definitely not, according to the second author, good for a clinical measure. And that's pretty much the the analysis and the output and interpretation for two-way reliability analysis using Cohen's kappa and the intra-class correlation coefficient. I hope you guys get a better understanding of it from watching this video. So if we want to calculate the standard error of measurement for the ICC statistic, we can simply take the standard deviation from the scale statistics, which would be rounded off to 19.01, and the actual intra-class correlation coefficient statistic, which is 0.562. We then go to our, our little Excel calculator, and we enter it in. So our standard deviation here is quite large, 19.01. And our ICC is 0.562. So using the formula of standard deviation times the square root of 1 minus the ICC statistic, we get an SEM or standard error of measurement score of 12.58. So this expresses the variability of the test or the scores in the same units as the original measure. So we know that 68% of the repeat measures are likely to fall within plus minus one SEM of the true value. So 68% of the repeated measures are likely to fall within plus or minus 12.58 of the true value. And that's quite a nice statistic to just add in when you're tabulating your IC statistics. Your, your markers and examiners might appreciate it and that's always good to keep and that's it for this tutorial thanks for watching and i hope it was useful